Hello, it's Sunday fun day. Unfortunately, rainy, rainy, rainy this morning. Rainy, very rainy. Uh, today I've got um, my McAuliffe, Connecticut. Um, kind of early here, got my cup of coffee. Uh, I'd like to start up. I'd like to start with something a little lighter, but still uh, this McAuliffe, uh, Connecticut. Um, still, lots of flavor. Uh, just a delightful smoke. Mm, very good. So, all right, let's get started on Sunday Fun Day. Hope you're uh, staying uh, staying dry. Uh, but we'll get started um, on this day. You know, I was uh, going to start out with a trivia question, uh, something a little different. It's not different. It's something I've been wanting to do. So here's my trivia question, and uh, I'll give you the answer in a little bit. How did George Costanza, you know, from Seinfeld, how did George's fiance die on the show? Hmm. I'll give you the answer in a minute. First of all, I want to make sure uh, if this is the first time you've seen me, uh, this is Vinny. Uh, this is the world according to Vinny. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, share it, hit the notification, any help I can get. Really appreciate uh, you all coming to visit me, and especially on Sunday Fun Day. i uh, got some uh, things I'm going to be doing, uh, uh, maybe traveling a little bit in the vehicle. I saw somebody do that on YouTube, and I can uh, talk a little bit. So we'll, we'll talk about that. So first off, this is weird, but, uh, you know, nerd, uh, news of the absurd and kind of a little bit nutty. February 23rd, UPI, a Philadelphia airport announced it has employed food delivery robots to make it easier for passengers to grab a meal in a contact-free manner. Why can't we just go to the place and order and go sit down? I mean, you know, are we always going to not want to touch people ever again ever so philadelphia international airport unveiled a uh, gita a robot with a 40 pound capacity cargo bin for delivering or food orders to passengers waiting for their flights the robot uses bluetooth to follow an airport at your gate representative through the airport to the location specific, uh, specified by the customer who can order their food from the airport restaurants via order at phl.com. Oh, isn't that just so delightful? Now more than ever, uh, we're looking to be forward-thinking and innovative regarding our, regarding our countless ordering options. Megan O'Connell, PHL Food and Shops Marketing Customer Service Manager. You know, how, how about, uh, how about uh, Megan, you, you know, just go back to work? Uh, it, uh, she said that this allows our guests to customize their experience by choosing how much or how little human interaction they want when having their food delivered. This is about crazy. Right. And then the joke was somebody put, uh, they compared uh, this uh, robot you can probably find on UPI uh, to the Star Wars uh, droid. No, you're not in Tatooine Airport, but this is a robot delivering food from the different shops. Started starting today, guests placing orders might have their food brought to them by the little robot. Hmm. Huh. It's a pilot program. I hope it disastrously uh, fails. Sorry. Vinny doesn't agree with any of this silliness. None of it. So. All right. Uh, February 19th. An Ohio man is making the Christian... Tradition of Lent, by which we are in the Lent season, by giving up solid foods for 46 days and getting the majority of his substance, what would that be? What would it be? Beer. Of course! An Ohio man. Del Hall of Cincinnati. I wonder if it's Hootie Delights. Remember that beer? Hootie? Hootie Pole? Oh my goodness. Del Hall of Cincinnati said Lent diet includes only beer, water, black coffee, and herbal tea. And as of this Friday morning, a day three of his diet, he was down 5.8 pounds. 
I only have three to five beers a day, he told WXIX TV. It's not like I'm drinking constantly. If you eat your standard diet, it gets boring. You don't eat the same thing every day, so I am definitely not going to drink the same thing every day. Hall said he successfully completed Lent beer diets in 19, 2019 and 2020. Each time noticing health benefits of the experience, he lost 40 to 50 pounds both years, noticed his blood pressure and cholesterol improved. Um, he said the Hall said the human body is an amazing thing. We're used to going through uh, as hunter-gatherers, feast and famine. Uh, the problem is we don't go through the famine anymore. Hall is raising money through a crowdfunding initiative dubbed Sergeant Dell's Virtual Tip Jar. He said the money will go toward local bars and restaurants that have suffered losses due to the COVID-19 pandemic. You know what? Now that's good. So good luck, uh, Dell. Oh my goodness. Drink a drink a hootie when a hootie pole for me. February twenty second, a Wisconsin man is celebrating a streak of lottery luck after he won fifty thousand dollar Powerball less than two weeks after collecting one hundred twenty one thousand, the Badger Five jackpot. Wow, that is one lucky guy. Wisconsin lottery fish said Norman Fuller of Port Edwards. Visited the Madison Lottery Office recently to collect his 121,000 prize from the January 25th Badger Five drawing, and he returned to Madison just a few days later to pick up his $50,000 on the February 6th Powerball drawing. Oh my goodness! Both uh, Fuller's tickets was purchased at the Quick Trip number 347 in Wisconsin Rapids. If you're near there, I'd go. If you're superstitious, I'd go by there. Uh, Fuller is a military, retired military veteran, said he is a regular lottery player, but he was shocked to win two big jackpots in such a short amount of time. Said he plans on using the winnings to become debt free and share with his children and other family members. He says he plans to continue to play in the lottery in hopes of extending his winning streak. Of course he is. Of course he is. Well, you know what? You got to play to win. So, you know, I buy just, uh, you know, small amounts, but. It is what it is. So, anyway. Now, I want to say this last story. I think this is the last story, but I used to work for a nonprofit organization, the Fraternal Order of Eagles. We used to go to Sarasota, and we would stay at the Helmsley Hotel. So, remember that. June of 2011. This is an old one, I think, but maybe because something happened. The richest lap dog in the world... A little white Maltese named Trouble died at the age of 12 in her final days in luxury. Every need tended to around the clock in Sarasota, Florida. Now, we remember hearing the story. Trouble owed her coddled lifestyle to her former owner, the New York hotel heiress Leona Helmsley, who died in 2007 and turned her back on her relatives to bequeath the bulk of her state $12 million to her dog. Hemsley bought the beloved pet for comfort after the death of her husband, billionaire Holtier, uh, uh Harry Hemsley. A judge later knocked down the dog's inheritance to two million. Um, though the pooch died in December, news of her demise was only reported this week. The pampered pooch had led a life of luxury after her owner purchased her a New York City pep shop and chauffeured her around in a stretch limo. Uh, limo. In death, Helmsley earned her nickname the Queen of Mean, cutting her off her children, grandchildren, leaving a trust fund to the cherished pet. Uh, Helmsley served 18 months in federal prison on tax evasion in the 1990s, but she did leave millions to her brother, Alvin Rosenthal. He was initially responsible for caring for trouble. The other two grandchildren were spared her final wrath and left five million each. Provided they visit their father's grave at least once a year. Good children. But when her brothers refused to care for the dog after Helmsley's death, trouble was flown by private jet to Florida. Uh, the will also stipulated that when the Maltese went to the big kennel in the sky, she would lie beside her in the 12,000-foot Helmsley Family Mausoleum in Sleepy Hollow Cemetery in Westchester County, New York. Oh, my goodness. The dirt-hating Helmsley ordered that the mausoleum be washed or steam cleaned at least once a year, for which she left three million dollars. <laughs> we went to the hotel when we were at the conventions, and uh, 
they were talking about this is where the dog stayed and they had a he had a full time person that got paid and that was the job to make sure the dog was taken care of. Now that is crazy. So, well, this has been Sunday Fun Day. Going to have the trivia answer. I'm glad you hope you enjoyed it. Um, got some uh, something popping up on Tuesday, I believe. Um, I think that's when uh, I'm uploading the video on Tuesday. Uh, it may say I did it. I did it actually Saturday, but I'm uploading going to upload it Tuesday. So go to um, go to the world according to Vinny, because um, I am Vinny, and please subscribe and check that out. And um, if any of you are cigar smokers, uh, I would highly recommend that you go to your brick and mortar, um, enjoy a cigar. I'm enjoying the Connecticut by McAuliffe. Mm, and I'm a brand ambassador. I urge you to go find some of those fine, fine, delightful uh, cigar sticks. Uh, they're wonderful. So the answer, Susan Ross was George's on-again, off-again girlfriend and later fiancé. She died from licking cheap toxic wedding invitation envelopes that George bought during their engagement. Well, of course Georgia from Seinfeld did that. Oh my goodness, this is Vinny, and this is the World According to Vinny, Sunday Fun Day Edition. I will see you soon. Talk to you next week. Have a great Sunday. Enjoy the NASCAR race. See what happens. Take care.